Welcome back to Sunless Sea. So I'm currently at the Isle of Cats. And the main thing that I need to do at the moment is take my illegal shipment of vials of red honey back to London. Back to the trader. So I'm thinking the best way to go about doing that. I want to explore a little bit more. And I did just get a bunch of casks of mushroom wine. Yeah, I've got six of them. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make my way up to Godfall because it's pretty close to here. And they accept a shipment of five casks of mushroom wine for a bit of money. It's not that much money, but it's something. So I'll go up there, see if I can find anything in the darkness on the way. Take my shipment of mushroom wine. Probably go over to Polythreme and maybe take another shipment of clay men. And then I think go to Savior's Rocks, because I think with one mushroom wine, there, there was something over here, and I think it was at Savior's Rocks, the spider place, where you needed like one mushroom wine to be able to get a port report or, or something special. And I do have six of them, and I only need five for Godfall. So that's going to be perfect. Uh, then I can make my way up to Ace to Bell and get some more supplies. And, <laughs> heck, I guess I might as well go to Aram since I have the Dark Drop Coffee Beans. Reduce my terror. Actually, that might not work out, because if I stop at Ace Deville and use my Something Awaits Me in Port, then I remember what happened last time is that it wasn't ready by the time I got to Aram. So maybe I won't do that. And my terror is already actually pretty good. It's at 31, so I don't need to worry about it too much. Yeah, so I'm going to go up here. Godfall, Polythreme, Savior's Rocks, Ace Deville, and then I think just make my way back. Yeah. I'm trying to think if, I have, if I'm going to have enough fuel to do that. I don't have enough supplies even to make it to Ace Deville, I think. Especially since I'm just about to eat another supply. So I'm going to buy kind of expensive supplies. Just two. That should be plenty. Fuel. Is 20 going to be enough with my lights on? Uh... Maybe... to make it all the way here and then back? I don't know. Maybe. But... there's there's plenty of places to stop along the way where I could buy more fuel. So, yeah, let's just not worry about it for now. Let's make our way up to Godfall, which is north and a little bit east. Visage. <gasps> Visage? Never mind, our plans just changed. Oh, hell yeah, we're going to Visage. I have at least one quest, I think two quests there. Yeah, I do have two. I have the quest where I need to um, find the person in Vendor Bite. They wanted me to find their, like, uh, girlfriend or wife or, or something in Visage at a college, I think. And then I think I need to go here for the main quest, the, my father's bones. Yeah, so never mind. We're turning around. Hopefully Visage has cheap fuel and supplies. Should I boink it? I'm gonna boink it. Boink. Whoa. Flourishing of years. That's a humanoid face, but it doesn't actually look human. What the hell? Hide your face. Hide all your faces. Okay. Where do I put my faces? This is the port of Visage where faces may not be naked. Oh. Except one. A stone monument the size of a village church. Serenely gazing upwards. 
Flourishing of years. Huh. Strange. Once you set foot on Visage, you may be here for a little while. I'm kind of scared. But... What's the worst that could happen? Let's get a port report. A departing merchant gives you a confused account of crocodiles and honey cakes and something about... ear blockage? To this, you add your own impressions about the street layout close to port and the types of commerce here. When the lights are especially bright, it is possible to make out the details of the profile of that great stone face. Let's go ashore. Terms. All those who enter must play their parts. The sign is visible only after you've crossed the threshold. <laughs> Great. Have to play my part, whatever that means. On the lower slopes. Stone buildings, flat roofs, archways. In the architecture, there lingers a memory of lotus and palm frond. The hill above is a face, forever looking up at the ceiling of the Untersea. No one inhabits its cheeks or the hollows of its eyes. Check into the customs house or the assigner of corpses. Hmm? Hmm. Well, let's check in first. All visitors must pass, one by one, through a room guarded by a person in the mask of a moon moth. Choice of masks. Oh, interesting. Masks in an assortment of shapes and colors await. I can ask to go about without any mask? Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. Everybody must play their part. I kind of want to ask what's up with the masks. Let's ask. Assorted pestilences. Moon Moth explains. Each mask declares a different intention towards the denizens of visage, and must be accompanied by suitable behavior. The frog is for visitors who, though perhaps clumsy and unfamiliar with local etiquette, have come in order to observe local ways and to make uncouth comments about them. The locust is for those who seek profit in visage, and would carry away as many goods as possible. You prompt about the bat. Moon Moth hesitates. Bat is an ill-omened visitor. Sent as a messenger or a spy. Bat always dies. Oh. I'm glad I asked, because I might have taken the bat. I am a vampire, after all. <laughs> And vampires are kind of immortal, so I guess that's ironic. Okay. So, clumsy or for profit? I can actually choose the bat. Oh my god. What would that do? Would it just <laughs> would it just kill you outright or something? I don't want to know. I'm not going to tempt fate. Frog or locust? I'm not really here for profit. I'm here for quests. So, let's go with the frog. Harmless. Moon Moth lifts the mask and places it over your head. The eye holes are large and they're fitted with spectacles. These improve your view of the environment, though you must look bulb-eyed from the outside. There's also a mechanism attached to the mouthpiece, which magnifies any sounds you make, even your breathing. You start to thank the Moon Moth, and it comes out as a booming croak. May you profit from your visit and knowledge, says Moon Moth. His wings fold neatly over its back. Wait, so if I can't even talk properly, how the hell am I going to do anything? How am I going to how am I going to get anything done? It sounds like I'm not. I think I just screwed myself. Well, this is going to be awkward. Oh, wow, you can't even leave yet. You really do have to play your part. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's go for my main quest, I suppose. One of these masked strangers is the assigner of corpses, if the gracious widow is to be believed. But which? Hmm. 
What mask does the assigner of corpses wear? Interrogate the visitors. The visitors seem reluctant to discuss the matter, even with Frog. It is distasteful, or forbidden, or inconvenient. But surely someone will let something slip. A man in a crocodile mask trundles an ibis-masked corpse on a wheeled... Beer? I don't know what that is. Is this the assigner of corpses? He shakes his head. This corpse was assigned to the Fathom King, he explains. I go now to the hold. The Fathom King knows why. Was that a meaningful pause? If no one here will speak to you of the assigner and his assignments, might the Fathom King know more? Hmm. Find the Fathom King's hold to continue. Where's the Fathom King? He said he's going to it right now. Does that mean it's on the island, or he's going to like load it up on the boat and go somewhere else to the Fathom King? Because I don't see no Fathom King here. Hmm. Flood Court or the Library? Let's go to the Library. Stoop at the lintel, enter the dark. A room of heavy stone, guarded by a golden statuette of a woman with outstretched arms. The scroll... niches? Sorted to go... yeah, the scroll niches sorted to correspond to a variety of masks. The jackal and the lioness, the crocodile and the dung beetle. A woman in the mask of a lotus blossom is standing at a lectern, reading in silence. Moonmoth stands to one side as your escort and tour guide. I can study the scrolls in a bumbling way. I can steal a scroll? Oh my god. That is really stupid. No. What's the purpose of this room? Filed under M for masked. Moonmoth explains. People think it means something like Library of Fragments, but this is wrong. The parts in question are like parts in a play. This is where the denizens of Visage come in order to learn how to perform their masks more accurately, more completely, with a truer spirit. Hmm. Write notes in the margins? I shouldn't be writing in the books, should I? Or the scrolls? That seems like defacing their property. Well, I'm a frog, so I guess I'm going to study the scrolls in a bumbling way. Seems to fit with my mask's personality. Hearts guarded. Taking the nearest, you read it aloud. For guarding against the loss of the heart. Moonmoth takes it from you, rolls it tightly, and returns it to its niche. There are as many ways of guarding against the loss of the heart as there are different masks, he ex it explains, in the same light and in different voice. I don't know what that means. I guess, am I done? No, I'm not done. Visit the Flood Court. The Flood Court is a long stone room with two ranks of columns on each side. Currently the court is ankle deep in water. Though water stains on the stones show that the flood has often reached higher, sometimes up to the height of your waist. In a raised niche at the far end of the room sits a statue of a man with the head of a ram. He holds a jar from which water flows out onto the floor. What's the purpose of this room? Depth per day. From a corner, Moonmoth picks up a graduated stick. He shows you how a person standing at the end of the room may dip the stick into the water and use it to measure the water level at a pre-selected point, and how the measurements are compared with measurements written on a calendar. If the water level does not match the calendrical position, an assembly of pipes and drains is used to adjust it. It used to be, says the moth, that the water rose and fell of its own accord, and the people before wrote it down what height it reached. Now the water is still, but, thanks to their actions, we can replicate the rise and fall, so as to still be pleasing to the god of flood. 
It completes his explanation with a half-body bow towards the statue of the ram, the ram deity. Deity, rather. Deity, deity. I, I guess both work. Hmm. Try to steal the statue's jug. <laughs> oh my god. You know, those seem like really stupid things, but... Given the masks, that might actually be playing your part. Like, that might be playing your part correctly if you have the right mask on. To attempt to steal. Tastelessly compare this room to other bodies of water. Frogs know water. They do. Have you seen the Kumian Canal? Or Kumayan Canal? However you pronounce that. Moon Moth watches inscrutably while you talk about other bodies of water that have impressed you more than this one. Deeper, clearer, colder, more densely populated with fish. Other denizens move away from you and towards one another. Your social function is well performed. Playing my part. Excellent. So, I can leave now, but what if I just go back to the flood court? Anything different? I can do the same thing, but it's probably... Oh. Actually, that gave me more expertise. Interesting. Trade masks with the Moon Moth. It has been making subtle overtures for some time. You only now understand them. I do? Okay. It is keen to go. It draws you aside into a closet in the Customs House. Had enough of visage, it tells you frankly. Here, you take my mask and pretend to be me. And I'll trade in the visitor mask and get on some departing ship. Get my life back. Its face. No, now you see, her face is aging but unlined. A lifetime of never needing to use a facial expression. Wait. Take my mask and pretend to be me and I'll trade you in the visitor mask and get, get on some departing ship and get my life back. Wait, 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 how long have you been here? Am I trapped here now because I took your mask? I don't see any option to leave. It wasn't joking when it said you might be ashore sometime. Wow. Okay. Um. Let's roll with it and hope something good happens. I don't know what these places are. The House of the Chief... Geometer? And my tour guide's gone. Because she left, so I, I'm not going to be able to ask for an explanation. Uh, what if I go back to the Assigner of Corpses? Anything different? If no one here will speak to you of the Assigner and his assignments, might the Fathom King know more? So I can go across the Z? Perhaps not. Oh, wait, wait, what? Apparently I just left? Uh. Shit. I think I just missed a bunch of stuff. I thought that would take me back. I didn't think it would completely take me out. I didn't even think I could leave. Shit. Well, um. That's awkward. I'm gonna stay here until my something awaits me in port comes back. Let's get into the light so I can turn off my light and not burn too much fuel. Adam's way? Right there. I'm just gonna spin in a circle for a minute here. Hmm, 
Just another day on the Undersea. It happens. Okay. <clears throat> Do I have to start again? Check into the customs house. Sure. Should we go back to the frog mask? So I guess you start fresh every time, right? Because they don't know who you are. You're basically anonymous. Yeah, so let's go, let's go with that again. So Moon Moth is back here. Okay, so we can do the same thing and get the Moon Moth mask. So let's do that. Tastelessly compare. Do, do, do. Trade masks with the Moon Moth. Okay. Let's not do the Assigner of Corpses. Let's visit the house of the Chief Geometer. Lines in wet ground. Each morning, the man in the cobra mask draws lines in the mud flat with a pointed steel rod. This apportions to each inhabitant a small trapezoidal area from which to harvest mushrooms and to scrape salt. No plot is ever preserved from one day to the next. The man is the chief geometer, the keeper of directions, master of land measures and sea measures. Okay... Can I have my own small trapezoidal area from which to harvest mushrooms? And salt? Bring a string of rats. <laughs> what? <laughs> now you've been invited to his home. At the time customarily appointed for him to receive those who are not his equal in rank, yet not so far beneath him as to deserve to be ignored. What ceremoni ceremonial gift will you bring? Uh, well, he's a cobra. I suppose a cobra would like to eat rats. I don't know if they'd like to eat rats on a string. A necklace. A poem concerning snakes copied on a new scroll. Comb made of bone. Fresh candles. I don't have any. Do not go. Hmm. Uh, I have no idea. A string of rats sounds really rude, but at the same time, it is a cobra. Um. Hmm. Let's bring him some rats. <clears throat> The rats are accepted, but immediately passed on to the household cat. A sleek, black, satisfied creature, in its own small mask of filigree gold. Awkwardly, this leaves you with no other gift for the geometer himself. You have no choice to... You have no choice to depart early, before someone thinks you have to... You have remasked a more embarrassing part. Wait. You have no choice to depart early? Does that mean I have to stay, or does... It... Oh, I, I think I meant to say you have no choice but to depart early. Can I go back? I can. Let's not do that. Um. At some point, he's just going to get pissed off with my gifts and just, like, eat me. Or strike me with venom. Honey cakes. Sounds delicious. Uh, a poem. Mixed results. He appears to be pleased by this gift, but it takes him aback as well. Several times he remarks that this sort of merchandise is something he would expect to be brought to the island by a bat. It requires a great deal of chittering and wing folding to persuade him of your moth nature. Hmm. 
Okay. So not the best thing, but it worked. I played my part mediocrely. Let's keep trying. Honey cakes or a poem again? Let's try honey cakes. Triumph. Ooh. He accepts. He approves. The cakes are placed on the front table of his receiving room so that the other guests may observe and appreciate the correctness of your gesture. You are permitted to stand to one side and to watch the others arrive. But there is no one whose gifts supplants yours in the place of honor. Not even the gift of a preserved lark, frozen in gelatin, with a bubble of song rising from its open beak. When you depart the chief geometer's house, he presses on you a prediction. That one day, when you have most need, the earth will swallow you in one place and spit you out in another. It is, of course, only a ritual saying. Hmm? Is it? I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't only a ritual saying. Enter the hollow of the ear. Oh, of the face. This is a journey of several steps and may conclude your current visit. Hmm. Let's do it. Yeah, you need to have seven expertise in parts. And I've worked pretty damn hard to get there, so let's do it. A proud nose. It is a festival day. The great stone face has been illuminated from forehead to chin with blazing torches, so that the profile is visible from the side more clearly than you have ever seen it. Flourishing of years is awake, says the genderless figure in the crocodile mask. All the denizens of visage are walking towards the far to get, or walking towards the ear together. There is a place in the procession which belongs by right to the wearer of your mask. Fall in line with the others, secretly bringing a flare with you. You can get up to all sorts of crazy stuff here. Stuff that I'm worried might like cause you to be killed. I mean, secretly bringing a flare to a place of ritual is obviously not acceptable. That's that's dangerous. That's really dangerous. Let's fall in line with the others. How else will you discover, discover what lies within? Among your own. You go as though you were truly one of them. You carry nothing with you but your mask and your costume. May your heart be as light as a feather, says the woman in the lotus blossom mask, as you fall into line behind her. Inside the hollow of the ear. The road you follow leads up through switchbacks along the side of the face, and finally to the ear of flourishing of years, and into the cave that is her ear. The tunnel bends back on itself, and all lights have now been extinguished. There is nothing to guide you but the hands of the person behind you on your back, and the movement of the person in front of you. The one who walks beside you wears a bat mask, Fortunately, the floor of the tunnel is very smooth and presents no stumbling blocks. Sound carries strangely in this place, however. Sometimes you cannot hear your own footsteps, and sometimes a breath comes back to you audible from some place ahead in line. The one who walks beside you wears a bat mask. And didn't the moth say the bat dies? I think that person may be about to die. Bats don't eat moths, do they? No. Right? Uh. Continue. The footsteps of the people are steady and synchronized, and you go together. For how many years has this been done? And for how many will it be done in the future? Watch your step here, says Bat Mask to you in an undervoice. Its accent is the accent of Wolfstack Docks. Floor is about to get squishier. And sure enough, it does. A squishy floor? What? 
The outside seems to be stone of, of the face, but is the inside fleshy? Ugh. Accent of the wolf stack docks. That's back in London. At last, the tunnel opens out. You and all the other congregants spread out in a cavernous space. A voice speaks in the darkness. A ritual preparation. Here at the new year, we gather under the one mask of flourishing of years. Her face is turned to the gods. Protected by her mask, we may remove our own. Protected by her script, we may speak outside our parts. Here and there is the sound of people's fumbling with ties and strings. Your own face feels different with the mask off. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm getting less afraid. I'm feeling less like I'm going to be eaten by the bat or something. Now that we have our masks off. Listen to one of her... One of your own secrets. Hmm. Fight the urge to giggle. Receive the confidence of a stranger as holy. Huh? I don't even know. I don't really want to commit to anything until I really know how this works. Let's just wait and listen. Not much for blackmail. You move stealthily through the dark, hearing one knot of conversation and then another. The secrets exchanged do not offer, offer much leverage. You can't see the owners of the secrets. Here and there you catch the smallest fragment of something that might serve you on a future occasion. The memory of a voyage east, a half-rumor about the Carnelian coast, a muttering about the Admiralty. The hour of confidence is drawing to its end. If there is anything else you need to do, now is the time. Can't do anything else. Let the ceremony end according to the proper rites. Last bell. At the end of the hour, there comes a woman with a feather of shimmering silver, which she tucks into your hand. Symbol of the innocent heart that will not be eaten by the jackal. Then a bell rings, and the time of speech is over. You all begin to put your masks back on. It is possible, you cannot know for sure, that in this cover someone has exchanged a mask with someone else. It is an orderly and perfect line that emerges again from the ear of flourishing of years. If anyone watches from above, they must surely be satisfied. Whoa, this place is fascinating. And I just gained a secret from that, and a captivating treasure, which, if my memory does not fail me, I believe I can sell for a crap ton of money. This is a fascinating place. Alright, hold on, let me check that, um... That captivating treasure. Here it is, um... That's an Aram, so I can sell it for 50 fuel, I believe. Which <laughs> would be wasted on a ship of my size. Anywhere else? You can... Buy... Oh, yes. I don't know what the hell happened here. I accidentally typed in a number when this should be an item. Don't know what the item's supposed to be, but anyway. Yeah, the Captivating Treasure actually sells for... 1,000. At Khan's Shadow. Anywhere else he uses it? Nope. So Aram and Con Shadow. At Aram it can give me 50 fuel, at Con Shadow it can give me 1,000. So that is very, very valuable. Extremely valuable. Okay. Should I go with the Assigner of Corpses? Or end my performance? Let's go with the Assigner of Corpses. Okay, across the Z. If no one here will speak to you of the Assigner and his assignments, might the Fathom King know more? Find the Fathom King's hold somewhere in the South or Central Unterzy to continue. The South or Central Unterzy? 
That's a very, very wide, wide range of places. Let's end my performance. Calmer. When the other citizens are distracted, you find your way to the familiar customs house and rid yourself of mask and robe. There is satisfaction in laying aside a role well performed. Lost 10 terror. Nice. Yeah, this place is just fascinating. That was very cool. And much longer than I expected. I was thinking I would get all the way back to London in this episode, but that is not going to happen. I almost want to just go down and explore down here. I believe this is the strange place, Adam's Way, the place with the tree. I think, the one where you want to f you want to make sure you leave before the tree fully grows or something like that, or before it dies. There's something strange like that. Hmm. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about my money. Like, I don't mind spending money now, because I can sell the captivating treasure for a thousand at Con Shadow, and Con Shadow is right where I'm going to go buy, so I'm just going to sell it along the way. So, I'm actually going to go down to Adam's Way. And then probably end the episode there. Wait a minute. My supplies aren't very good. Can I buy supplies at Adam's Way? Well, I just have to make it back to the Isle of Cats. I'll be able to make it back there. No problem. No problem. I'm very paranoid about Z-Beasts down here. Alright, looks like we're good. Wait a minute, what's inside of here? I didn't realize you can go back here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is it all red? weird. Yeah, okay, I don't like that. No. No, 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 that's creepy. Yeah, remember I needed something... Oh! I needed recent news, that's what I needed, and I don't have it. Or this, which I also don't have. Or a port report from Mount Palmerston, because apparently they really like that place. I believe if I don't have a way in, I don't think I can do anything. Except apparently buy some stuff. Oh, hey, you can actually buy Foxfire candles here. Interesting. And the prices for fuel and supplies are actually not bad. They're more than normal, you know, back in London and stuff, but compared to other places where fuel is 20 and supplies are 30, that's not bad. Hmm. Alright, well, thank God I can actually buy some supplies, even if I can't do anything here. I can't do anything, right? Unsafe? Yeah, I can't. Okay, well, let me add this stuff to my uh, spreadsheet, and I'll be right back. There we go. Got everything marked down. So I'm actually going to buy some supplies and some fuel. Because again, these are actually fairly competitive prices. And considering how far out I am from London, I don't mind paying these prices. So definitely supplies, I really need that. 
I just need enough supplies to last me until I get to Aesteville. Yeah, that should be plenty. Now, I don't want to go to Mount Palmerston or refuel anywhere before I get back to London, so I want a bunch of fuel. I'm just going to max it out. Yeah, because I'm going to burn through it pretty fast. Alright, so I think we're good to go. Knowing that I can buy supplies here, I kind of want to just keep exploring down south, actually, before I even go back up. I think I might even do that, actually. Because I could just keep going east and then, you know, come back here to Adam's Way, refuel and resupply, and then do my old plan of going up to Con Shadow, selling the captivating treasure, Godfall, dump the casks of mushroom wine, Polythreum, get the clay men. Yeah. I think that sounds pretty good. I feel pretty comfortable being able to come back here and resupply. Don't have a huge amount of money, but uh, buying supplies should not be a problem. And again, I'm about to sell the captivating treasure for a thousand, so not too worried about that. Okay, yeah, so I think next episode I'm probably just going to explore some more around here. And I think I'm going to end this episode here before it becomes over an hour long like the last one did. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's really, really hard. It's like, I just want to go to one more island, one more island, and then I visit an island like Visage and it takes like a half hour because there's some massive, awesome storyline. It happens. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.